It's only good for me. You're not supposed to live anywhere where they let you drink 24 hours a day. That's fucked up. And they give you free booze when you're gambling. No, fuck you. That's crazy. How is that the law? And it's all Red Bull plus something. So you got a fucking chemical battle going on in your consciousness. Half of you sped up, the other half is fucked up. So it's just seesaw battle retardation. When you're on Red Bull and whatever, and it's like nine o'clock in the morning, you don't even know who the fuck you are. You got one cylinder that's just moving your feet in certain directions and making up decisions on what you're gonna eat. We went to the Spearmint Rhino Strip Club at 9.30 a.m. on a Thursday. Yeah. And it was packed! That's what was really depressing. That's one of those dumb Red Bull and vodka moments where you're too stupid to be making your own decisions. We were eating breakfast, we were down to two word sentences. We were just like, waffles, bitch. <laughs> you know how you get there? You know, you know how you get there? You get to those, uh, and nobody says anything for a minute, and somebody goes, word. And all I'm thinking of is sleep, man. All I'm thinking is, oh, I can't wait to hit that pill. It's gonna be so nice to go to sleep. And I hear, hey man, you guys wanna go to the Rhino? And I'm like, fuck. That's my voice. So I look at them to see if they heard it too. <laughs> And they're like, it's open, it is open. It would be open right now. All men need is one dude in the group that's more fucked up than everybody else. And then they feel normal. You know, you could be the craziest whoremonger of all time. You're like, well, I'm nothing like Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's a fucking animal. You just need that one dude. Let's go to the game, let's go to the game. Let's get coke and hookers. <laughs> and then there's silence and someone goes, are you serious? Who's, who's serious? Are you serious? <laughs> and then you always have to have the conversation with the wife. Why are you even hanging around with him? He's so beneath you. Yeah. Like, we're, I'm loyal. He's a good buddy. I don't agree with the way he thinks about women, but... <laughs> no, man. We got there and it was packed. There was nowhere to sit. It was like the opening scene from Blade. And I was just, I was on so many different things. I was on, a, I smoked some pot, I ate some pot, I drank a lot of whiskey, there was a lot of things going on. And I was sitting there, you know those moments you have when you're pissing? When you go to the, when you gotta reevaluate your life when you're hammered? Ladies, I'm sure you have those too, but it's a different thing. For dudes, it's like this blank moment, almost like an isolation tank where you're forced to stare at a white surface. And you're pissing, and you're like, I probably should just get the fuck out of here, right? kind of a joke is that? <laughs> Fucking ridiculous, man. I'm preparing for the apocalypse. I thought the apocalypse wasn't gonna happen as soon as Rick Santorum dropped out of the race. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I don't know if Rick Santorum's ever had gay sex, but I'm pretty sure it's on his bucket list. How about that? In the Wiley Coyote cartoon, motherfucker. You ever go to Texas? That's not Santa Monica, bitch. That's a totally different kind of white people. Those are some wild West people that have computers and modern guns. They're not supposed to be there. People didn't evolve in Texas. It's not like they were monkeys and they became people and they stayed in that spot. No, it's, no, no. They landed on boats on the East Coast. The stubborn ones stayed. The smart ones made it to California. But along the way, we lost a bunch of people. And some of them just stuck around while y'all go ahead. We're gonna hang back here. I'm gonna draw the biggest dick the world's ever seen in the sand. My wife's got the biggest titties. I'm gonna try to fuck a snake. I think it can be done. They just stayed. They just gathered cattle and stockpiled ammo. And they all talk alike. And that's why you gotta be nervous. You gotta be nervous in places with accents, okay? It's one of the reasons why I can prove that California is the best spot to live. Because all the spots that suck, they all have to sound like each other. 
Because I, I grew up in a place like that. I grew up in Boston. It's not that the people in Boston sucks, but the weather sucks. It's fucking horrible. And in the winter, everybody gets in their car in the morning and just goes, fuck, 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 fuck. And everybody's worried about it's the real possibility you might starve to death one day. You might freeze trying to walk home. So they all talk in the same way. Oh my God, how many more months of summer? Ah. When is this fucking winter gonna be over? We need more firewood. Yeah. They have to sound like the people around them. So if other people invade, like, we stick together. We're all in this together. That's how they are in Texas, too. They're like, yeah, y'all ain't from around here, are you? They have a fucking certain way of talking, which is proof positive why California's the best spot. Try, try making fun of a California accent. What are you gonna do, speak clear and concise? What are you gonna do? You gonna mock us? You gonna say some shit that everybody understands? They're not supposed to be in Texas, folks. It's not even a state. It's a republic. They're like, man, we ain't so sure about this whole United States thing. We won't hang back. We'll hang back, see how this plays out. They don't have any rules. They have like three pages of rule books. Here, Here's how I know this. I'm going to tell you a fact, a fact about Texas that'll change the way you think about Texas. There are more tigers in captivity in Texas in private collections than there are in all of the wild of the world. <laughs> I'm going to repeat it because I know you're like, oh, the Fear Factor guy's just making shit up to make his jokes work. <laughs> No, there's more tigers in dudes' yards in Texas than the rest of the fucking planet. How is that possible? Because they can. Because they went through the rule book. Don't say shit about tigers. Order it up, dude. Order it up, dude. One guy got a tiger and his neighbor's like, shit, I didn't know we'd get tigers. And he got two tigers. And the first guy was like, I ain't about to let this faggot out tigering. And he opened up Tiger World with his oil money. We're gonna need those people, folks, if the Russians invade. We can't make fucking warrior babies with those chicks in Marin County with fake asses and rubber lips, okay? We're gonna need some real warrior jeans. We're gonna need some women who wear non-ironic Daisy Dukes. We got cowboy boots with no socks and stinky feet, and they yell out, Chris Kyle, rest in peace when you make them come. We need those women. The Russians come, we gotta be ready. Think about the children. Think about the children while I get a sip. This is super important, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people. No, I'm not gonna, because there's so many creepy old people that nobody fucks with. Like Hugh Hefner, he's another one. If that guy was young, Jesus fucking Christ, that guy is a fucking dork. He's a dork with his stupid wardrobe, with that fucking smoking jacket he wears in every picture. Like as if you just showed up, oh, I just got out of the shower. Good morning. <laughs> I can't believe a camera crew's here. Where's my pipe? Look, here's my four retarded girlfriends. They're fucking, he parades them around. Every picture! The guy's never by himself. Those four lost, sad, soulless girls. It's just so pathetic. They look exactly the same. You look deep in their eyes, you see the back of their skulls. They're all the exact same length hair, same clothes on. Their names fucking rhyme. They're like Mandy, Brandy, Sandy, and Cunty. And it's supposed to be cool, because he's an old guy. Oh, he's a player. He's a creepy old fuck. Could you imagine if that was a young guy? Could you imagine if that was like Brad Pitt? Imagine if Brad Pitt had like four retarded girlfriends and a smoking jacket in every picture. You'd be like, what the fuck is up with that asshole? I'm a player. I just love the ladies. He's a creepy old delusional fuck with a shitty magazine. He's a pornographer. That's what he is. He's a pornographer. But nobody even thinks like that because he's got a loophole. They don't show their vaginas. He just loves the ladies. It's not exploitive. He's a creepy fuck with a shitty rag. I can't even whack off to that fucking slop he puts out. I want to see it all. Don't you, what the fuck are you hiding the vagina for, you piece of shit? Behind a veil, a tuft of pubic hair? Oh, it's in the shadows. It's mysterious. I want to see it! I want to see crystal clear, lubricated, in focus vagina. What am I, a fucking baby? I'm a little kid. I don't want to see. If you can't see it with a mirror, you're not supposed to look at all. 
Look out a mirror, I can't see my vagina. I don't know what it looks like. In the olden days, they never saw it. Creepy, delusional pornographer, fucking asshole at shitty parties at his house. You know, this, I always thought it was creepy. And then I read this article in Playboy magazine, and, I'm like, and then I got really mad. I read this article where they ask him, which is a legitimate question. They go, Hugh, how do these four girls feel about dating you? You know, because they're very beautiful, and you're fucking disgusting. <laughs> They don't say that exactly, but I read between the lines. I'm good at that shit. So I swear to God, this is his answer. How do these girls feel about dating? He goes, oh, they feel very lucky. This has always been a dream for them. <laughs> Go with this fucking answer. Oh, yeah. The, oh, lucky them. Dude, they're lucky to get a heart on, you fucking asshole. You got like an oil drum filled with Viagra by his bed. You got to take like 30 of them to get a chubby. Ooh, lucky, lucky girls. Living the dream. 27, almost lucky, almost, almost. 28, getting closer to lucky time, living the dream. 29, lucky time is around the corner. He's gonna like squeeze the base of it to keep a semi going. Oh, oh yeah, look at that, I've got some blood in that there. Someone must be lucky, lucky, lucky girl. Ooh. The reason why there's four girls, the other three are like a fucking support group, right? They're all in the corner dry even like... <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when it's my turn. <laughs> it's, it's okay, sweetie. He's gonna get you on VIP. <laughs> Fucking whatever. He's got white hair coming out of his asshole. <laughs> my pajama bottoms on, someone must be lucky. Lucky girls living the dream. He's got a cock like one of those 7-Eleven hot dogs been spinning around in that turnstile for a month. Oh, count the wrinkles on that little number there, lucky girls. Oh, living the dream. And he only orgasms like once every seven weeks, but it's not even sperm that comes out. It's a brown fluid that resembles flat Pepsi mixed with cigarette ashes. As soon as he comes, he loses control of his bowels. Oh, oh, lucky, lucky! Oh, look, I made poopy. Someone must be lucky. Lucky girl. I swear to God, I'm going back to beauty school as soon as I stop throwing up. Looking for beauty school, has got an airbrush. I'll be in the grotto with other lucky girls. Living the dream. Now, he just likes women, that's all it is. He likes women. He's a playboy. He's fucking 80. When do you, like, say, I just want to go fishing, okay? Everybody get the fuck out of my yard. If he had his shit together, why would he have the cast of That 70s Show over his house? You know what I'm saying, folks? Something wrong with the motherfucker. I think that people are responsible for the Big Bang. And it's the stupidest idea I've ever come up with. And it's not even real my idea because I was high on a pot brownie in an isolation tank when I came up with it. But the, the idea is... I, we were, also, we're fascinated by technology. The biggest experiment right now is the Large Hadron Collider. You guys know what that is? It's the biggest experiment in human history. It's 10,000 different scientists from 100 different countries, and they've made this 22-mile-long something fucking machine that's spinning these atoms around, a hair under the speed of light, and they're going to slam them into each other and make little black holes. But what's crazy about that is those particle physicist dudes that nobody understands, one of their theories is that inside every black hole may be a whole nother universe. And that what the whole universe might be is galaxies, inside every galaxy is a black hole. Inside that black hole, hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with black holes in the center, each with hundreds of billions of galaxies, and it's fractal, and it will go on forever. And they're just making this shit in Switzerland. There's a bunch of fucking dudes, and everybody's like, well, we gotta stop gay marriage. I'll tell you right now, there ain't no gay guys gonna live next door to me and treat me like an equal with his little wife. We are gonna make the fucking Big Bang. And I know it sounds ridiculous, and especially coming from the Fear Factor guy, it loses all credibility. 
But if you stop and think about it, man, they don't know how the universe started. But the big theory is the Big Bang. And that theory states that 14 billion years ago, the whole universe was smaller than the head of a pin. But something happened and exploded and created everything we see in the sky today. I think 14 billion years ago, there were some scientists. And they were probably autistic. And they were on anti-anxiety medication. And they were drinking Red Bull. And no one touched them. And they would masturbate. And they never cried. And they made a Big Bang machine. And they sat around and looked at it. One guy went, I'll fucking press it. And he hit that thing. And the whole sky went. And it's a reset button for the universe. And every 14 billion years, we hit it one second quicker. And that's infinity. Maybe, or maybe I was high as fuck and I'm just making shit up, okay? And a girl was guarding the front door by herself. What are you trying to say? That women can't do everything men can do? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So that's a, that seems sexist, right? People say, you're sexist. No, it's not sexist. Here's why it's not sexist. Because men can't even do everything men can do. See, there's no physical equality, folks. That's why we have the Olympics. Because there's people that can do some shit that you and I can't do. One of those things is guarding the fucking White House. I know I can't guard the White House. You know who I know? Because I met Shaquille O'Neal, and his dick is where my face is. That's not equality. That's not white privilege. Listen, if the White House is experiencing a shack attack, I'm the wrong dude to save the world. I did Fear Factor with Shaq. If we were holding hands, we'd be like a six-year-old at the park with his dad. We're barely the same thing. So do I think women should guard the White House? No, I don't think I should either. It's not sexist to say that women can't do big physical labor things as good as giant men can. But people will tell you it is. Well, I'm not sexist. As a matter of fact, my favorite people are all female. I have a wife and I have three daughters. They're my favorite people in the world. But I could beat the fuck out of all of them. <laughs> Listen, if they guard the door, I'm getting in. I don't mean to sound cocky. But I'm just real confident. I could fuck them up if I had the flu. Okay? Yeah, we're different. We're different. I could beat on my cat, too. I'm not proud of it. I'll just tell you what's up. You want to bet money? Bet money on me. I'll fuck that cat up. Most likely. Cats are fucking weird like that, man. I was petting my cat once, and he bit me. I was like, whoa, we going to do this? What the fuck are we doing here, man? Got a little nervous. Got a little nervous. Women can do everything men can do. This guy's a piece of shit. We're leaving. Too much information is going in that I'm not agree with. The guy said it was total bullshit. Total bullshit. How'd that girl get that job? I'll tell you how that girl got that job. Because someone let her have that job. Which means either there were a bunch of guys that were trying to fuck her, or her boss was a chick and she hated her. Either one's possible. Look. If there was a bunch of guys that were trying to fuck her, that makes total sense. If there's one hot girl and she's working with five guys in an office, no work's getting done in that office. There's, that office is now just an audition to see which guy gets to fuck her. And each one of those guys would just slowly start to morph to figure out what this girl likes. Man become like an octopus that tries to fit its way through a keyhole. Like, gotta be a fucking what? Garrett's gotta be a fucking what? Got this girl's like, I could guard the front door. Oh, you could definitely guard the door. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> and over time, if, one, if this woman doesn't sleep with one of these men and claim them, over time, these guys will just start morphing. And they'll just start saying ridiculous, preposterous shit. Debbie wants to guard the front door. Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I think women are amazing. <laughs> Plus, I'm vegan. They will wear patchouli, they will do what the fuck they have to do. Next thing you know, poor fucking Debbie at the front door. Why am I alone? <laughs> the whole story is so bananas. 
And it's one of my favorite stories. I'm going to give you the whole story of the break in the White House with no edits and no, no comic exaggerations. This is the real story. Because a lot of people think there's some grand conspiracy. There's some cabal of evil geniuses that's pulling the strings on everyone in America. It's most likely that people are just dumb as fuck <laughs> in all sorts of walks of life. So I'm going to tell this is the story. This is the real story about the person who broke into the White House. First of all, people are always worried. The government's checking out my emails, bro. The government's watching us all the time. The, they pulled this guy over two months before he broke in the White House. He had four handguns, two rifles, and a machete with him. They didn't even watch him. He had a map. On the map, the map was Washington, and it had an X where the White House is. They're like, you're good to go. <laughs> they let him go! Two months later, this motherfucker broke into the White House! And why'd he break in the White House? Why do you break in the White House ever? Because you want to die. You don't, that's like a suicide run. That's the only reason why someone runs toward the White House. If you had to ask someone, like, what kind of security do you think they have at the White House? Oh, dude. dude. They got snipers on every corner. They got lasers on the grass. If you get too far, they open up the door, you drop right into jail. <laughs> nope. Turns out they don't even have a dog. You just, you just fucking run. The guy who made it into the White House, he had 800 rounds of ammunition in his car. Left out there, took a knife. <laughs> That's a guy who wants to die! He's just sitting in his fucking car going, fuck the government, and fuck my ex-wife, and fuck everybody. I'm going to do this. Fuck you. Oh, my God, I'm doing it. Oh, my God, I'm doing it. Thinking with every step, this is going to be the last step of my life. No, this is going to be the last step of my life. Oh, this, we get to the front door. It's unlocked. <laughs> he opens it. There's a girl there by herself. The Mac turns to the ground. Just got through the hall. Ah! He's probably going, why am I alive? He's probably thinking. He was in the inside for minutes, for minutes running around. He got tackled by an off-duty officer. He's probably thinking, I wanted to die. I don't want to go to fucking jail. Will somebody please shoot me? Then he's probably pissed. Like, where are my tax dollars going? What kind of security are you fucking people running in this place? Imagine when Obama found out a girl was guarding him. He's probably like, everybody, everybody. Not that much diversity. <laughs> Dude, what are we playing? Fucking fairy tale games here? Obama's got a hard job because he's the first president that's ever been around while Google was here. You know, he could Google his own name. If he gets crazy in the middle of the night, right? So let me see what the people have to say. <laughs> Obama is a... Uh, oh. <laughs> None of those fucking things. Freaking out. Shit. <sighs> Probably thinking, why the fuck did I do this? I think the guy who broke into the White House and Obama probably have a lot in common. In that they went for it, but they probably never really thought they were getting in there. <laughs> You can't quit once you're the president. Like the moment Obama actually got in office, like, good morning, Mr. President, probably like, oh, no. <laughs> the fuck did I do this for? I didn't think I was actually going to get in. <sighs> I can't sleep. I'm freaking out. Everybody wants to kill me. <sighs> Who the fuck is guarding me? <laughs> Looks out in the hallway. There's a girl taking selfies. That'd be the greatest selfie of all time. Girl with her ass out, duck lips, in the background, dude's breaking in the White House. <laughs> That's a wreck. You know I'm not making this up. We've all seen this. This is recognizable. Human beings are some funny animals, man. 
Anna Nicole Smith still fighting that lawsuit. I love that chick. She's my favorite, dude. I love that whole thing. That whole lawsuit was the shit to me. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. I loved the whole marriage. And I loved the most about it. When she married that old dude, how many women were upset about it? They're like, oh my God, that's so terrible. She doesn't even love him. Like, don't you think he fucking knows? The guy was 90 years old. He made a billion dollars from scratch. Chances are he's a tad crafty. You know, like, no, he's an old man. He doesn't understand anything. That dude knew exactly what was up. How do you want him to die? Billion dollars in the bank in three weeks to live? What do you want him to do? Throw the shades, sing me Bible songs, and get all of my money to charity. Fuck that shit! But now he got himself a big, fat Kentucky Fried hooker. That's the way to go. That man, he had vision and willpower. He was in a wheelchair. He couldn't even wipe his own ass anymore. He's fading in and out of consciousness. The whole family's giving him shitty advice. Like, Father, if you just invest in these annuities, ah, right, Junior, I got no time for investment. I'm a wealthy man, but not a whole lot of time. And Lordy, Miss Claudia, won't you, won't you wheel me over yonder where that big girl is? Woo! Oh! Oh, Annie Nicole! Oh, you wildly overfed Texas fly. Well, come over here for a moment. You listen on here, sweet Petunia. Yeah, seeing as how your modeling career is in the crapper and your ass has grown to the size of a small couch, I'd like to make you a proposition. <laughs> Junior, will you shut the fuck up? I can't even hear myself thinking. Yapping in my ear, I don't need no advice. I'm gonna cut to the chase. Lick my balls and I'll give you everything I got. <laughs> Just give me your hair and don't look me in the eyes because that shit throws me off. Clear the room. Give a man some respect and privacy. Get the fuck out of here. Why are you looking at me? Coming in cock block and the whole family's like, Father, can't you see? She doesn't really love you. She's only doing this to get to your money. Like, oh, no shit, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Tell me, what was your first clue? That I'm bald, that I'm 90, that I've been shitting into a bag for the past 14 years? You freeloading cocksucker interrupting my erection. You coming here again, I will have your dick stapled to your forehead and a flaming pineapple shoved up your ass. I killed Kennedy, motherfucker. I kill you too. What? No, I don't pay no attention to my children. I was drinking straight moonshine when I had them. They's all got water on the blame. Nick my balls! That's where the money is, honey! Get these doctors out of my room. Don't you touch me with that needle. Prolong my existence. I'm gonna meet the good law with a smile on my face. Where'd that fat hooker go? Hey! Oh, no. Hey! Anna Nicole! Oh, come on, baby. I see y'all there in the hallway. Who the fuck else has got a size 52 red sequin dress on? Get your fat, tacky ass in here and lick my balls. You gotta do your wife to do this. Jay Howard, I would love nothing better than be with you right now in your time of need, sugar, but visiting hours between 9 and 11. And right now, it's a code to one. Oh, 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 oh. Listen here, this just in. I just bought the hospital. No rules! Lick my balls 24 hours a day! You're the only one on staff! But I, 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 can't, look, I cannot do that right now. Sugar, your whole family's here. They're gonna help. Junior! Junior, you useless piece of shit. You get over here and be a good once in your life. I want you to pick up her skirt so I can see her vagina in the mirror while she's licking on my balls. And I want you to bring your oversized ass over this way so I can spank you with the good hand. Get me a couple of warm ups. Oh, life is dandy going out with a bang. <laughs> Jay Howard, I will not let you disrespect me like this. You know, I used to be a model for guests. Well, guess what? That was then and this is now. You got fat and I'm fucking rich. Lick my balls. I will not be denied. Here's my accountant. I feel myself fading. I want to purchase some shit. I want me a fire truck filled with circus freaks and dancing naked ladies with rockets shooting out of the assholes and ponies. I've always loved ponies ever since I was a little boy. This is a beautiful animal with long, fluffy tails. Oh. No, this is it. This is it. I'm going down a dark tunnel. Oh, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, and I see angels and I, I hear beautiful music. Oh, I believe it's it's time for a rim job. I'm not dead yet. Make that ass so you don't get that cash. I want you to dunk your tongue into my keister like a thirsty pit bull drinking out of a toilet bowl. I want the last breath out of my body be a fart you suck out of my asshole. And then you can keep the house. Yeah, edit that. Chop that 
one up for TV. These people that are signing up to go to Mars, do you know about this? This is a mission to Mars, a manned mission to Mars, where 200,000 people have signed up to be amongst the four people to die on Mars. <laughs> They're gonna take a one-way trip to Mars. That's, that's some sad shit for a bunch of reasons. First of all, it's some sad shit because that's 200,000 people that don't have any real friends. <laughs> right? If it's someone you love, your real friend, if one of my friends is gonna move to Florida, I'll be like, bitch, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> You gotta go to Florida. We can't hang out if you go to Florida. Why the fuck are you moving to Florida, man? But you might be able to deal with it. We could just visit each other every now and then. But if your friend was gonna move to Mars, you'd be like, Oh, really? Get in the fucking car. Just get in the car, dude. Take him out to Death Valley. Look around! Sucks, right? Mars sucks worse. Get back in the car, stupid man. Jesus Christ. This place is in America you can't live, man. You don't want to live in Detroit. Why the fuck are you talking about moving to Mars? <laughs> People really consider moving to Mars. It's one of the dumbest ideas ever. But if you say that, people will eco-bro you. You ever been eco-broed? People will find an opportunity to virtue signal over you, as Michael Shermer likes to point out. You, you, you like puff their chest out and say that they're like probably better than you. Hey, dude, seriously? You think there's something wrong with going to Mars? Well, I don't know if you paid attention, man. We maybe should colonize Mars, because California's almost out of water. <laughs> don't nod like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> We're right next to the ocean. What the fuck are you talking about? Look at all that water. You fly over it, it takes a day. The world's blue. It's more water than it is not water. We have a salt problem. We don't have a water problem. Suck the salt out of the water. We got a goddamn party. Instead of pissing and moaning. Too complicated, bro. We got to go to Neptune. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking crazy. We're a crazy race filled with crazy people. We're like a dude with a dirty house. Like, man, I got to build a new house. No, you got to stop shitting in your kitchen. <laughs> stop piling up newspapers you're never going to read in front of your bathroom, you fuck. We're crazy. One-way trip to Mars. A one-way trip in coats with three other people so fucking stupid they're willing to die on Mars with you. Great. What great conversation you're going to have. It's nonsense, folks. My friend was like, they're not going to die on Mars, man. People are smart enough to figure out how to get to Mars. They're smart enough to figure out how to get back. Here's why that doesn't make any sense. People smart enough to get to Mars aren't going. <laughs> So that's the dirty secret about rocket travel, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody smart enough to make a rocket ever gets in one of those fucking things. No. No, they look at each other right before the launch and they go. They talk German and they get behind giant fucking concrete bunkers. They talk some square-jawed corn-fed dude from the middle of the country, tuck a Bible under that dude's arm and strap him into that giant metal dick and shoot it off into the heavens. That's what we do. And that is what that is. That is a metal dick. It's a robot dick and we're trying to fuck the sky. We are literally trying to come people out of the tip of a metal dick onto other planets. Our ultimate goal is that we get those planets pregnant and they're too filled up with people and then they gotta make a new metal dick. Bro, we gotta go to Jupiter. And they make another one. They shoot that fucking thing and they fill Jupiter up. We just keep filling the cosmos up with people and we never evolve and we never change. We stay perfect like we are right now. Who's in? You're gonna all come with me. We're gonna leave here right now and go to the Church of Scientology right down the street. It's all gonna make sense when you find out that you are an eternal being that created reality so that you can enjoy it. I watched that HBO documentary a couple too many times. I went clear, I think. I think I'm clear. I'm back. I'm back now. If you haven't seen... It's not a UFC fan. Somebody spill something on your Affliction t-shirt. Fucking crazy. Don't turn this fucking place apart, bro. Bro, Fedor and Kotor must fight. <laughs> One more Mickey Mouse? It's Mighty Mouse. One more Mickey Mouse. It's Mighty Mouse.
I got it at Walmart. I did. Yeah. I did get it at Walmart. No, Walgreens. I got it at Walgreens. Is that bad? Listen, I'm only making fun of your shirt because it's silly. Mine's silly too, but I self-admit it's silly. I wore it knowing it's silly. You left the house thinking you look fucking cool. <laughs> Bitches are gonna fucking love this. Yeah, fucking flaming skulls on my shit. You know, I saw this at Walgreens and I was stoned out of my fucking mind. I was looking for potato chips. This just happened to be there. I said, I'll take that. I'm gonna Mighty Mouse. When do you get to see a fucking Mighty Mouse t shirt at 11 p.m. on Sunday? Fucking grab that shit. That's the universe sending you a message. <laughs> I might be wrong. As long as you're having fun, buddy. You gotta be able to make fun of your shirt, man. Come on, man. Hey, 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 all right. This is SpaghettiOs fans, man. You got money. SpaghettiOs, dude? On your, on your jeans, man. You got money, I know. Uh, Someone's looking at my dick very closely. <laughs> very closely. I don't see no SpaghettiOs stains. Oh, right there. Oh, interesting. Look, that guy just freaked out. His Dadar, knowing you're behind him. He fucking threw his beer up in the air like it was a Jimmy Pop bag. You little fucking homo. You found my one spot. Why don't you come lick my tartar sauce up, bitch? Everything he earned in a three-year marriage. He worked for 10 years, 10, 12 hours a day, and just fucked up and married over his head. Shit got crazy. He had to pay for her lawyer. Do you imagine what it would be like to go to war for the rest of your money and you have to pay for the enemy's general? I watched him go fucking crazy. I watched him at red lights just going, fuck, 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 fuck. You're like, what's wrong, man? Nothing, nothing, nothing. The dude was just, he was murder-suicidal. We were talking him off the edge. I guarantee you, if you came up to my friend Matt at his darkest moment and said, listen, Matt, I can fix your life. I have a time machine, and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to press this button, and we're going to go back in time to the moment before you met your wife, and you are going to get to live your life over again, knowing the mistakes of the past. But before we do, suck my cock real quick. That's how gay marriage can get. Because I don't know how you would respond in the same situation, but I'm pretty sure my friend Matt would have knocked himself unconscious sliding into that dude's pelvis. He would have sucked that dick like it was the horn of freedom. Like he was on a cliff with a conch shell. Calling battleships. Like he was at the bottom of the ocean breathing through a straw. Freedom! And why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? If that's all you had, how long could it take? You get a whole do-over? You wouldn't do it? I'd say you're gay if you won't do it. You don't want to do it, you want to live your whole life in a downward spiral that you're never going to pull yourself out of in this economy? Or, suck his dick in time travel. What are you, a pussy? Get in there, son. That would be my advice. I would say, suck his dick in time travel if you came to me. My other piece of advice would be, make sure he really has a time machine first. Okay? The last thing you want to hear after you blow a guy is him laughing about it. That is, 
It's a bad feeling, man. You're throwing up in the sink, and he's on the phone. A fucking time machine! I told this motherfucker had a time machine! Come on, man, why you laughing? Why you laughing, man? You know I ain't got no time machine. Come on, man. Come on, man, cut this shit. Let's be honest with what's going on here. Here's what's going on. You like sucking dicks, but you don't like to take responsibility for your action. Right? So you get tricked a lot. Hey, man, don't cry. Oh, come on, man, don't cry. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Here's what's up. First of all, I'm just fucking around, okay? And I do have a time machine. There's no worries, man. I got a fucked up sense of humor, but I, I crack jokes. But here's what's important. I feel bad. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, and I'm gonna make it up to you, okay? Suck it one more time and you can fly. <laughs> I did that. It sounds ridiculous, but if you, if you put that ad in the paper somewhere, suck my dick and you can use my time machine, <laughs> most people would go, get the fuck, but at least once a week, you would get a guy who calls up and goes, how's this work? <laughs> and like, that's what you're fishing for, man. You're not looking for flounder, right? You're looking for a very specific type of fish. I did that joke in LA and a guy came up to me after the show and goes, shouldn't do that joke because time travel is impossible. <laughs> like he waited, waited, he had to tell me. He's like a, one of those fucking assholes on Twitter that wants to let you know when you're wrong. Dude, time travel's impossible. And I go, what does that mean? For now? Are you sure you know what is gonna be possible a million years from now? That's crazy. Who, who, who saw fucking phones coming 300 years ago? Who saw 30 years ago looking at a phone and going, someday you're gonna watch people fuck on that? <laughs> There's a lot of shit we don't see coming, man. 200 years ago, if you wanted to picture something, you ought to draw it. Think of how stupid people were back then, you know? No one knows what the fuck the future holds, so you just say it's impossible to have anything in the future silly. And the guys, you don't understand science. It's called the grandfather paradox. The reason why a time machine's impossible is because if you had a time machine, you could go back in time and kill your grandfather before your father was ever conceived. Thus, you could have never have existed to make that time machine. And I'm like, what kind of an asshole wants to kill his grandpa? <laughs> Out of all the douchey shit you could do with a time machine? That's the name of a scientific principle, really? How about go back to high school and fuck everyone, paradox? You know? I wouldn't kill grandpa, but I'll fuck the shit out of a few confused 18-year-olds, all right? If all of a sudden I found myself back in 1985, oh shit, I might be running things. I would go straight Prince Purple Rain. Okay, okay. But I'm also telling you right now that I'm not going out like Bruce Jenner. Oh. That's right, politically correct San Francisco. Here's my, here's my take on this Bruce Jenner thing. And, you know, everybody has their own. Not really. This is what everybody's take is. This is the take that you're supposed to have. He's always been a woman trapped in a man's body. Maybe. Definitely maybe. Definitely people are like that. Definitely there are people who were born in the wrong gender. And am I saying they should stay their gender? No, who gives a fuck? You should do whatever you want to do. You should be happy. You should be free. I don't care what you do. But... <laughs> It's also possible that maybe, if you live with crazy bitches long enough, you become one. That's all I'm saying. I don't see this, I don't see this discussed. It is entirely possible. If you put a praying mantis on a leaf, it becomes the color of the leaf. Why? Because it wants to live. It wants to survive. It wants to be accepted by its environment. You show me a man who's lived with the Kardashians for 10 years who didn't come out a chick, and then we'll have some data, okay? Because right now we lost a fucking American Olympian, and I want you to have some respect. We're down Bruce Jenner, and I've got a close eye on Kanye West, and I don't exactly like what I'm seeing. Clearly 
jealous about Taylor Swift and he tweets like a coked up stripper in the middle of the night. You don't see what I'm seeing. We are watching the plot of a fucking Stephen King book play out. An American athletic hero moves in with a woman who's made hundreds of millions of dollars through no way anyone can explain to anyone. He breaks up with her, she turns him into a chick. The whole world tells him he's beautiful. You tell me you won't see what I'm seeing. <laughs> you have to say, you have to say she's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's not beautiful, and neither am I. Look, I look like a thumb with two thumbs. <laughs> you put me in a dress, I'd be even more disgusting. Beauty's unusual. There's a lot of cool shit that isn't beautiful. 60-year-old dudes in skirts are on that list. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! What kind of games we play here? Why are you lying to children? That's beautiful. What are my kids gonna think when they see a mountain or a rose? Is that beautiful too, Daddy? Explain. Ah! Bang! I can't! The world's gone fucking bananas! What you're saying is horribly transphobic and incredibly regressive. And you should be embarrassed at what you're doing. You're doing this just to get laughs at someone else's expense. <laughs> maybe! <laughs> or maybe Bruce Jenner lived with demons. <laughs> maybe they waited by the bed until they knew he was in heavy REM sleep. So they can assume their true form. <laughs> Climb up and kick off their designer shoes to reveal Black Raven's claws. And clutch the edge of the bed and just whispered in his ear. <laughs> Please. 